Hello, Eric Morissette, candidate for District oh, 1, oh, uh, the oh. town of Pembroke Park. Uh, I'm Steve Bosque, the opinion editor of the Sun Sentinel, and my colleague Dan Sweeney is here as well. We've, we, of course, invited your opponent, Sharice uh, Cologne, to yeah. join us for this interview as well, but did not get a response. Um, first, very briefly, Eric, tell us about yourself. Tell us about, and also tell us how you got to the town of Pembroke Park. Yeah, that's a good story, actually. Uh, I'm a little bit of an international person. I, I was born in Canada. I grew up in Denmark. I have lived in Sweden and Great Britain, both England and Wales. And, but my father, he lived here in North Miami since 1960. And I used to come here every year to say hello. And, and um, when he died, I came to Florida to help his uh, wife. And what happened was I met this beautiful lady. And you know how that goes. Well, you have to change plans. And uh, I got married with her. I moved to the United States, had to uh, close my business in Britain. And it's been an adventure, I can tell you that. And I've been here for, we're going on 17 years now. OK. So, um, as I said, I had a pretty broad uh, background. I, I started out after my linguistic uh, training in, in high school. I took a farm management degree in, in college, and then I, I jumped directly to optics because there's no future in, in farming. I'm sorry to say, but uh, no economical future in, in, in farming. And so I've been working in, in optics for more than 25 years, and that is uh, instruments and, uh, for opticians and uh, eye doctors, hospitals. and. Uh, then I moved to England because I got a job off over there uh, for uh, being sales manager for the British Isles, uh, which was a fantastic experience, but in a completely different kind of business. Uh, and that was white format printing, which is uh, still quite interesting. Uh, and then, um, as I, I said, I'm, I moved to England because I uh, to the United States because I met my wife over here. Uh, I was actually behind her for being a nurse for my stepmother and okay. uh, I fell in love so, All right. uh, so here I am and uh, I've had to do a lot of different kind of work here in America they don't really recognize my my background as much but I've been maintenance director for some assisted living facilities and um, the last five years I've been self-employed kind of trying to slow down a little bit what's your uh, what's your date of birth <laughs> Uh, that is April 23rd, 1956. Okay. okay. Very good. You're, uh, you're 67. <laughs> you're 67. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll be 67 next uh, in April. Getting tremendous noise feedback, uh, which is going to make it hard to focus. Uh, at least that's, that's what I'm hearing on my phone, at least. <clears throat> yeah, I, I get more noise from you than I do from Daniel. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Okay. Well, I'm I'm on mute. No. Um, Eric, uh, tell us exactly where you were born. Montreal, Canada. Very good. Great place. Good place. Yeah. I have, you, a sister. You I have family. I have family in Plattsburgh, New York. Not far away. That's, that's close. That's very close. That's just on the border, almost. What's the most pressing issue that needs to be addressed in Pembroke Park? Oh, I, I would say our infrastructure, but there is so many other things. Uh, we have uh, we have some crime, uh, and I really think that the city needs to be uh, more fiscal responsible. I mean, they are spending some money right now that I I, I can't see is sustainable. In the long run because yeah it's very nice we have our own police department but uh you know these guys are going to have a pension one day and there is uh, 20 of them um and i'm not sure we can sustain that in the long run uh, but I, I do think the infrastructure and heartening of our community because uh, our sewer lines are very old. I don't know how about our water supply lines, what what they look like, um, and and definitely some of our roads needs to be maintained in a better way. 
uh, and I also want to have some more uh, stability in the town hall. We have lost a lot of talent the last year for various reasons, and uh, I think that's wrong to you to lose uh, brain power. Uh, on another note, uh, my work in the FMO, I don't know if you're familiar with the organization, but that's the Federation of Manufactured Homes in Florida. And we fight for the rights of mobile home owners. Uh, it's, uh, it's, right now, there's a very poor protection, uh, legal protection of them. We have Chapter 723 that protect, should protect them, but nobody is, is uh, policing that. You know, the TPPR uh, have their teeth pulled out and, and uh, actually not very um, interested in taking any cases. Let me ask you something about that. You work for the FMO, so you represent the park tenants, not the mobile home park owners. Am I right? Yeah, the park tenants. Right. Okay. What? Any idea? Can you give us any idea? Just give us a wider sense. What percentage of people in Pembroke Park live in mobile homes? Well, we have ever eleven parks, so uh, uh, that's a huge percentage. I would think probably half or more. Uh, I don't have exact numbers. But we have 11 parks, which is a very high number compared to the size of the city. Though some of them are mainly owned by Canadians, and and they're not voters, they don't have the same, and they own their own land, so they're not in danger of being uh, redeveloped uh, without their consent. But the other, uh, we have at least six, seven parks that are rental, and they seem to be running most of them pretty well they're family owned uh and have decent rent um, i mean people always complain about rent but they have decent rent it's it's, it's uh, uh affordable um but some parks are maybe in danger like you saw my opponent cc he got evicted from uh, trinity and there's no legal protection of people they just lose their homes and that's it your uh, I didn't catch all you, that. Your uh, opponent in this election you, has been evicted from a her mobile home? Been evicted from her mobile home. Yes, uh, she was in Trinity and she was evicted. Uh, officially, she's the only person living there right now. But uh, you you need to ask her that question, why and how, because it closed last year. I, I, I was going to say, Eric, the, the address that she filed her, her campaign papers on, and, uh, and, uh, the address that I have for her is in uh, the is that Trinity Towers uh, mobile park. You're saying she is not a resident there anymore, or she still lives there? I, I can't. You have to ask her that. I, I think it's peculiar if she's the only one there. Um, but uh, I haven't been digging into it. I think it's irrelevant. And I'm focusing on the election and on the uh, voters. So uh, that's up to you to ask that question. Very good. Okay. I know. How long have you been a registered voter asked. in the town of Pembroke? Uh, I became. Uh, a U.S. citizen three, four, year, uh, four years ago, going on four years. Yes. Okay. A U.S. citizen four years ago. Do you recall? Yeah. Do you recall yeah, the first time I voted? When you was, uh, four yeah. Can't hear. Yeah, I can't hear what he's saying. Do you want to retry uh, me connect? I can go back, connect, reconnect. Uh, sure, why don't you try to step out and step back uh, in? Yeah, I will. We'll just stand by here momentarily. Yep. Yep. I can actually still hear you. That's weird. Uh, Steve, he he was you know, some part some part of him was still in the call. He might have been on twice. Uh, I I removed him from the call, so he'll hopefully rejoin now. Okay. All 
All right. Did that do anything? That's better. Better. Still a little bit of, of uh, feedback, but not again. I think if 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 everybody keeps their mics muted while uh, while others are talking, we should be okay. Eric, my question was uh, how long you've been voting in Pembroke Park, and, and Dan, I'll defer to you. Uh, I I found Miss Cologne on the voter registration database easily. I cannot find Mr. Morissette there. So I, I know it's an outdated, outdated record. Uh, yeah, I voted. I wore, voted the first time for the presidential election. Uh, uh, the first Mr. Morissette. Yeah. Under your voter registration, you're under your first name, aren't you? Joseph Eric Mark Morissette. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the thing. You're Catholic in Canada. You uh, every all the boys are called Joseph, and all the girls are called Marie or Mary. I, so I, I went to Catholic school for a while myself, and, and every every girl I knew was a Mary Catherine. So I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, and that's been haunting me all my life. When people okay, come, okay, I, I found you here. Here you are. <laughs> Okay, this is this is not really on point uh, of this campaign, but we're all here, and uh, it's a topic we're very interested in at the Sun Sentinel. Eric, you're you're registered as no party affiliation. You're not a Democrat or a Republican. Why did you choose to register to vote as NPA? Well, you know, I want to keep my doors open. Uh, I, I it's no secret I have voted Democratic, but. Uh, if a good candidate comes up, a Republican, uh, and he makes sense, especially if somebody comes from the Republican Party and say he wants to cooperate with the Democrats, he's got to get my vote. Um, I don't want to be locked up in in a, in a party affili affiliation because I do think that uh, we need to be more open-minded in America. We need a. I think we should have a multi-party system, but that's a, that's another story. That's not about this uh, election. Okay. Um, the city of Pembroke Park uh, is in the process of basically restarting its own city police department, right? That's correct. I wanted to ask. I've got a couple. Of, I've got a couple of questions about that. But I, my first question is: Had you been you on been a town on commission? Had you been elected? Would you have would supported, you supported creating a city police department? Uh, no, because we have no control of how many officers we need. That is a union decision, and I believe it should have been the crime level that dictates how many police officers we need. We don't have we don't have economical control, and I would have preferred to see cooperation with West Park and maybe Hallandale Beach Police. Uh, it's not cost efficient for a small city to um, to to foot that kind of bill. Uh, we have to build a lot, uh, buy a lot of equipment and so forth that we otherwise could have shared with the neighboring towns. Uh, so that's a no. I think it's it's a prestige project. Uh, but I gotta say, on the other hand, it looks like we're getting better uh, policing. Uh, at, at least here in the beginning, it looks like they are arresting more people. It looks like we have uh, uh, lower response times, but uh, it's very open right now. It's very new. There was a there was a news there story was, in the Sun Sentinel in October on this very subject that uh, showed that many police who were being hired in Pembroke Park had been fired or removed from police jobs in other cities you recall that story yes i do okay okay i, I do find that problematic uh, i know that three officers were fired because they had lied on the application uh, but i do find it also co problematic that the chief of police was originally the consultant that uh, did the budgeting and planning for the uh, police department i think that's a conflict of interest this is not that I do not like the police, uh, uh, the chief of police. He, he's a pleasant person, but I, I think it's, it's, it's problematic. Is this, uh, is this police chief David Howard? Yes. 
he, 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 tell us a little bit more about that. He was actually a consultant who recommended the creation of the police department? He was the one that did all the uh, uh, studies and budgeting for the police department. And then he got hired as the chief of police. I, I found that problematic. What's the annual budget of the town of Pembroke Park in round numbers? I, I don't know. I have to ask Marlon or, or JC about that. How often have you gone to a town commission meeting? Uh, once a month. And then I have, I'm also on the planning and zoning, but usually I, tr I prefer to follow it on Zoom. Uh, we, we still have a little bit of a pandemic now. So, uh, you know, if I can do it on Zoom, I prefer that. Right. Is this the first time in your life you've run for an elective office? Yes, I mean, I was, I was actually once asked by a Danish party to run for parliament, but uh, in Denmark they have a bad habit of going after uh, your family in the press, and I didn't think I could uh, expose my family to that. Um, but that was a, that was very tempting. But I haven't run for office uh, over here. You know, you uh, you're busy surviving, uh, doing jobs and and making money. Yes, I'm going to uh, step aside and open the floor to my colleague Dan Sweeney for a question or two. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, could you, you know, Pembroke Park is a really small community. Very small community. Describe to someone who you know maybe from uh from, not, not from here. What exactly characterizes Pembroke Park? You know, if, if you were to describe the entire town in, in just a, a, a few sentences, what would you say? Well, it's, it's a small, vibrant community in, in its own way. I mean, uh, there is a, a uh, camaraderie going on in the mobile home parts. It's kind of like a, a, you know, uh, a strong community sense. Um, but then we have other parts that are, uh, you know, um, residential and industrial. So it's a very good mix. Um, I think the town has a future. Uh, but we need to be more uh, responsible with how we spend money. I mean, we, I know we do get grants and so forth, but a small town is very vulnerable uh, to uh, economical fluctuations. And um, I don't believe that we should borrow money unless it's, it's you know, uh, for survival. When you say for survival, does that include uh, infrastructure changes that, uh, that need to be done? Yeah, we, we definitely need to make sure that we don't have a, a Fort Lauderdale or Miami situation where sewage comes out of the ground and or a Flint, Michigan situation where people who can't drink their water. These things are not sexy. They're, they uh, But it, when you explain it to people uh, on the street, they do understand it and, and they will vote for you. You can tell people the truth and they will vote for you. Uh, you don't have to make up uh, fantastic plans and stories. You you can be down to earth like them and and tell them the truth. This is what we need to do, and it may cost them money. If you were to prioritize infrastructure in Pembroke Park, what do you think is the what's the first thing that needs to be tackled? Oh, absolutely, sewer and water. Uh, and then hardening of our electric system. I, 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 you know, I come from a country where all the power lines are in the ground. <laughs> so I, when I see all this happening, just a little storm and, and people are without power, I'm, I'm shocked. You know, I, I know it's technically possible to generate uh, energy and, and deliver it much more safely than we do here in America. But uh, again, what we can do as, as a park is, is ask the uh, uh, FPLNL to, in the future, whenever poles need to go and uh, uh, be replaced, to put them in the ground, put the cables in the ground. And also, we need to, uh, uh, you know, hearten our system so we don't get flooded. I, in my part, we have been flooded so many times. And that's how I really started getting involved with the city, by coming down and asking the commission questions. Of, of how come we can't drain where we live and people lose their cars or or even their their homes to uh, flood water i don't think that's sustainable uh, but that goes for all of south florida it's a huge problem all right 
Interesting. Yes, uh, underground underground utilities are still, you know, in many parts of the United States. Yeah, and it's long term. It's it's not economical. I I saw in Denmark they started changing the policy back in the seventies that whenever poles has to be replaced, if possible, you uh, they would put the cables in the ground. If you want to see power cables on poles in Denmark, you have to go to a Freeland museum and see or have a row of them so people can see how it was in the old days. Uh, and, uh, and we could also learn maybe from Denmark, they have an incredibly uh, solid power grid. And that's why Google put their uh, world headquarter, uh, computing headquarter in Denmark. It's because uh, they know they have power at any time. I want to I want to give you a, a bit of a civic civic quiz about yeah. living in Pembroke Park. Who is your state representative? Who speaks for you in Tallahassee? That is Wilson. Uh, but I'm actually just saw that they have redistricted, so I'm just falling straight out of that. So I don't know who would be the new one. I, I emailed uh, Wilson and said, "Hey, you're sending me all this information, but I think I just dropped out of your district." That was about uh, uh, in January they redistrict uh, the redrawn the district. I can help a little bit. Uh, you're referring to Frederica Wilson, who is a member of Congress in Washington. I yeah. was asking about Tallahassee. Who speaks to you in the state? I don't know. I haven't voted because I haven't voted for state uh, um, representation. Okay. Let me ask you about uh, something you put on your questionnaire. You raised the question about your opponent, Sharice Cologne, and said, why is she living in a closed mobile home park? Has she been arrested? Uh, uh, I, I, think you, I think you should look into it. I, I know that um, the, uh, one of the commissioners have looked into it and, and found some, uh, some uh, backgrounds there. But, uh, you know, I'm... I'm not here to say anything bad about my opponent. Okay. I, I'm and, sitting on the uh, uh, planning yeah. zone court with her. And uh, should I not? Should we not uh, uh, be rep representatives in, in Park, Temple Park? We still have to work together. Right. I want to ask you about something about that, about serving on the town commission. Uh, I want to ask you to explain to Dan and myself what the sunshine law is and how it relates to people who serve on the same board in a local government. Well, you know, it's it's about transparency. And, and I understand we have that in America. It's necessary in America because uh, there's a, been a lot of shady deals going on in the past. Uh, I will not stop uh, talking to other commissioners, even though that could be questionable, in, but I will always do it in the open. And I will honor that we cannot talk about town business, but we can talk about uh, county business. We can talk about state business. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we can talk politics, just not our own town. But I, I believe in openness. I, you listen, I come from a country that doesn't have corruption, so we don't need to have those kind of rules. But here we do, and we have to deal with it. Uh, that's our reality. Um, Dan, you, gotta, you, gotta follow yeah. you mentioned earlier that there are six to seven um, um, mobile home parks in Pembroke Park that are privately owned and rent. Yeah. Uh, is there has there ever been recently, to your knowledge, any discussion about redevelopment of of privately owned mobile home parks in the in the town? No. What what happened was that when uh, uh, Heidi, uh, what's what was her name? Heidi Siegel was a planner, a city planner. Let me find her name. Yeah, Heidi Siegel. She was the town planner. She mentioned that uh, Trinity had contacted her regarding redeveloping the, the the mobile home park there. And but we have nothing official. We have not seen anything in planning and zoning. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So they decided to close it. Uh, and I believe Chapter 723 uh, allows them to redevelop if they finance it themselves. They can't sell it off to another uh, company and then they develop it. Uh, our city ordinance uh, require for redistricting or, or rezoning. Um, 
and Trinity is sold as a mobile home park. So right now they can't do anything with it. Uh, and their plan was kind of uh, could I, I believe could cause damage to the other parks because if they did uh, build it up and fill the lake up, the question is where does our drain water go? Because we're pumping our drain water from the small lakes inside the mobile home parks into that big lake, and where's the water going to go if if they develop it? So if they were to redevelop it and uh, a developer included a plan for uh, for lake drainage, that would that would be something more interesting. Or are you kind of against any de development of of the mobile parks in in Pembroke Park and sort of changing the character of the town? I'm against redeveloping mobile home parks if it it results in people ending up in the street with no compensation. And this is what happens. Uh, we have no protection in Florida law for the loss of your mobile home. It's like we don't exist. Uh, and the fact is that when when these big uh, investor companies comes in and buy the parks up, they can hike the rent as much as they want, even though it's regulated by 723, they just go say, oh, that's market rent, and then that's it. Uh, we can't challenge it with the DPPR. We have no protection. We are working uh, with some uh, senators to uh, see if we can pass a bill, but we need to do that in cooperation with the FMHA, which are the park owners, and they don't really want to cooperate. We do meet with them once in a while, um, but we're not getting anywhere when it comes to protecting of, of uh, the homeowners. Uh, if somebody wants to run a highway through your home, you get compensation or redevelop your area. I do not. And, and I think that's, I don't get any company. Well, I do get $1,500 uh, from, the, I believe that's the state. I, Eric, uh, Dan and I hear what you're saying loud and clear. However, the distinction I think might be that as a mobile home park tenant, you don't own the property your mobile home sits on. The that's park the owner owns that property. That's correct. And, and uh, uh, but people build these homes uh, or have them delivered on that site and, and uh, tie them down. And they've been sitting there for many years and they can't be moved. They have a market value, but you're not getting anything uh, near the market value and compensation. And this is what I'm, I'm fighting for because I think this is, uh, is uh, unjust and uh, i don't think it, it belongs in a capitalistic and and uh law-abiding country where law and order is always being praised and then you have people that fall through the cracks and we have more than one million people in florida that live in mobile homes so and they have no protection right uh, i have a question on a slightly different subject one of the candidates in one of the other town commission races put on his questionnaire that um, Pembroke Park has a history of mismanaging taxpayer funds. Uh, I heard do you that. know anything about this? Or what is your view about mismanaging money in, in the city? I like accountability. I'm old fashioned. I don't buy anything I can't afford. I mean, I, I have no debt whatsoever. I buy everything cash when I can afford it. And I like the city to think the same way. This is taxpayers' money that you're spending on. on I mean, of course, you have to be visional, uh, have some visions like uh, building uh, maybe clubhouses for the citizens so they have places to hang out. Uh, and the young people have places to do uh, a little bit of volleyball or whatever. You need to have some quality of life for the citizens. But spending money you don't have or raising money in a questionable way, I mean, I'm not against taxes, but I'm against fees that do not reflect the cost for the city uh, to handle those uh, permits or whatever it is. And I don't like that because that's a that's an unauthorized tax. So, yeah, I'm not against redeveloping. I'm not against uh, that we evolve as a city because um, eventually a mobile home park would have outlived is is uh, natural lifespan or the mobile homes have. And now that I'm campaigning, I can tell you I've seen some homes that shouldn't be there. Um, but again, we can't. We need to help people, not just Kick them. Okay. 
but I have heard stories about mismanagement of money and and you know I'm not gonna dig up old history 20 30 years ago but there's a lot of things that's been going on and you probably know better than I do how much money do you expect to spend to raise and spend in the candidates in the United States have to raise money to pay for their campaign expenses yeah I'm trying to do as much of the work myself by uh, you know get out there and knock on doors give people a flyer and uh, uh, quite a few people have promised me, uh, to help me because uh, I'm not bilingual. Well, I am, but not Spanish. Uh, and um, so uh, Spanish pe pe people have uh, asked if they can help me. Uh, Canadians have had offered to drive people without. <laughs> I know a lot of Canadians here. They offered to drive the voters to um, to the voting station and bring them back again, all those who, who don't have a right. So people want to help me. Um, but I think in the old-fashioned way that you talk to people and and spend the time you need to because really they don't know what's going on in their own town. They really don't. Tell me something uh, that you touched on earlier. Tell me why more of the Canadian residents there are not registered to vote there. They can't. They, they are not. You, you can't. I mean, you have to be a U.S. citizen to vote. There's a there's four. I, I looked it up, and it says there's 14 cities in the United States of America that allow green card holders to vote, and that's it. And and you can be, uh, I mean, it's a felony to try and, and register to vote if you are not a U.S. citizen. I, I, it's not like in Europe. In Europe, if you move from one country to another, you can always participate in local elections, and in European Union uh, elections, you would have to have be citizen to vote for uh, parliament in that country you you're settling but we don't have those rules here not, not according to uh, what I, uh, I read on the internet but that surprises you too huh I would have no, thought no. We're, well, we're well aware that um you have to be a u.s citizen to vote but um, i think i think some canadian snowbirds have dual citizenship or i thought they did so. Well, a few of them, but most of them go back to Canada in, in, in April. Uh, there are people that stay here year round and have dual citizenship and they can vote and they will vote. I didn't have to campaign if the Canadians would vote here. <laughs> right. I would, be, I would be automatically elected. I get so much support right now from them. So, yeah, no. They know who I am. Yeah. There's a there was a, there was always an old joke. This was said more about the city of Hollywood, but there was always the old joke that you don't need to look at your watch. You can tell when it's winter time because just drive down Hollywood Boulevard and look at all the license plates from Quebec. It's, it's true, and 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 you know what? When when the season starts, uh, the manager of um, Publix he's out there shaking hands and saying welcome uh, welcome back to to Florida because. It, it is so important to our bottom line here and and uh, well you and I I'm not going to preach for you guys but you know that's our number one industry and that's what I would like to see that we could build some affordable housing here for, because there's a lot of uh, uh, workers here you know uh, housekeepers and and uh, hospital workers and so forth that need uh, you know need an affordable place to live because we can't just build expensive high rise and expect people to commute for hours to come and service these areas. We need to have local uh, affordable housing. And I mean lower than a thousand dollars. I think it's some of what they call affordable housing in Miami is it's ridiculous. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Um, this uh, has been a good conversation. conversation. We appreciate you, you participating and showing up and doing the questionnaire. Wanted to wish you best of luck in your campaign. You're breaking up a little bit, Steve. Okay. Well, Dan, try it, please. Uh, I, I believe he said this has been a great conversation, and we wish you the best of luck uh, in in your campaign. And we'll we'll uh, we'll you know follow up uh, with you uh, by phone if we have any follow up questions. Yes, sir. And uh, if I have uh, something I think needs your attention, can I contact you in the in the future? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Please do. Uh, I think you have both of our emails. So, yeah, definitely. Okay, I will. All right, great. Open, openness, that's that's the key. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your time, gentlemen.